Temple Nigeria is powered by the Covenant Nation. Our next speaker is Inyolu Aboyeji. Yes, a round of applause. We can't, we can't get tired of clapping, right? It's free of charge. Inyolu Aboyeji was born in Lagos on March 28, 1991, to Reverend Mr. and Reverend Mrs. Aboyeji. He's a Nigerian native of Isi. Local government area in Kwara State. <laughs> he attended primary school at St. St. Saviour's primary, primary School, Ebutemita, Lagos. After earning his secondary school certificate from the Loyola Jesuit College in Abuja in 2007, he continued to the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada, where he received his Bachelor of Arts in Legal Studies. studies. Iolua is currently the CEO and general partner of Fund for Af Africa's Future, popularly known as Future Africa. Africa's largest seed stage investor, which has invested millions of dollars into over 100 startups across Africa. Prior to that, he co-founded Flutterwave, a billion dollar global payments platform connecting Nigerian businesses and individuals to the global economy and served as its founding CEO from May 2nd, 2016 to October 5th, 2018. In those years, he led the company to become one of the fastest growing payments technology businesses of all time, processing over $2 billion in transactions and over 50 million transactions. In May 2014, Inulua co-founded Andela, Africa's largest engineering organization that provides training for African software engineers, which has provided training and jobs for over 100,000 African software technology entrepreneurs, professionals. The company has received investments from Mark Zuckerberg and Google Ventures, amongst others. Inyolua has also served his country as the last youngest member of Nigerians Nigeria's Presidential Council on Industrial Policy and Competitiveness as the Deputy Director General for Madam Obi, Obiageli Ezekwesili's campaign for presidency in 2019. He has been recognized as a World Economic Forum Young Global Leader and a Forbes 30 Under 30 Honoree, amongst other awards and fellowships. Please join me. He's no stranger to the platform but it's always an honor to have him here. Please join me as I welcome Inyolua Aboyeji. Thank you very much. Good time? Okay. Hallelujah. We're still in church now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Pastor Fodju and Mommy for uh, the opportunity. <laughs> for the opportunity, I'm very grateful. Every time I come to the platform, uh, I'm always wondering if they will invite me back. <laughs> um, but again, you know, at the end of the day, this is such an inspired platform. Um, it's it's uh, it's really. Uh, a vessel for God to really deliver his message to the, to the nations. And, you know, I just continue to pray for Pastor Fodro and the Covenant Nation that God will continue to use you in this way, in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, um, I want to just take a little bit of time to talk about the last decade I know today we're supposed to be talking about innovating our way into the future. But a very wise man once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll never get lost. And also, if you don't know where you're coming from, you can never really understand how to get where you're going. And it's important for us to understand how we've innovated our way to this present. 
so that we can understand what we must do to innovate our way into the future. You know, ironically, this year, 2023, um, July 4th, will mark 10 years since I came back to Nigeria from Canada. I know usually the, it's supposed to be going the other way. <laughs> but 10 years ago, I, I was in Canada, like, like many people are now going to, and uh, I, I, by divine providence, had to make my way back to Nigeria in order to start a business. And that, that was the, one of the singular decisions, I would say, that completely changed my story. My reverse jackpot. And I, and I want to give you a picture of my jackpot da. Somebody say jackpot da, yes. Thank you, brother. My jackpot da journey. I want to tell the story of, of, from that time because it's really important for us to understand how, how critical it is for us to continue to stay in God's will, regardless of where we are and where we want to go. And how that relates to the topic of today, innovating our way into the future. Now, when I came back to Nigeria, I'm going to show you this graph. It's a good picture of the last 10 years. Now, the reason why we didn't start from 2014, right, is because uh, in 2014, total funding raised in Africa was $28 million. The whole of Africa, not Nigeria, or the whole Africa, Kwata Kwata, $28 million. And the following year was 2015. And the reason why it's actually 228, I think Jumia took 100 million of that number. So you understand where we are coming from. So the year I touched down Nigeria, 2013, you know, 2014, we raised 28 million. And that was the year that we started Andela. We, we were moving, Auntie Yvonne, where is she? Uh -huh. She's here. We were, she was the one that introduced us to Titi Adeoye. And we started using her BQ in uh, Cameroon Road. We were about 10, we started with 27, then we whittled down. I think we ended up with four after the selection process. Four of us. The Andela that you see everywhere today, four people in a BQ. Before that time, we were sharing space in, uh, in CC Hub. At one point, we didn't have the resources. We went to Fadei. We were in Fadei for a while. And we kept moving around like that. I think that first two years, we had about seven locations. At one time, we were on Heber Macaulay, 310 Heber Macaulay Street, inside one small upstairs office like that. I think the place is now a microfinance bank. Just so you understand where we are coming from. So when you hear people raise billions of dollars, unicorn, uh, unicorn started from corn. <laughs> eh? So that you can understand where we are coming from. It's seeds, it's seeds that started. Now why do I say this? At the end of the day, where we are today as a country is a real testimony. If you were in Nigeria in 2014 and they told you, ah, don't worry, 10 years from now, all of you will be billionaires in tech. Where's Chuka? We used to be in the same office. Kende is here. If he had told you that, you'd be laughing now. All of us, I, at the time I was living in Kwako, we trek from Kwako to Heber Macaulay to thank God for Boston Tijani, sixth floor of CC Hub. That was where all of us met. Chuka, Kendi, everybody. All of us now used to come to this church. <laughs> so this church is part of the story. So when you hear Chuka talk about, I'm the first engineer they recruited from Facebook, it's not as if they born him inside. You understand? Is God's faithfulness. And so, we walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians 
chapter 5, verse 7. If you are looking at Nigeria of today, and you think this is how it's going to be in 10 years, I want you to look at this graph. We have 30% of the funding on this graph. Close to, close to, actually more than that, maybe 40%. Last year, we did about 1.7 billion of, uh, out of five in equity. All of this, so, from boys' quarters of, from sixth floor of CC Hub. Eh? It's there, it's still there. If anybody has removed the place, thank God. So that they will not say that it's Yahoo. It's there. And you can trace everybody's story. Now, why is this relevant? The most important thing, everybody else has handled the technical part. I'm not here to, um, to tell you about the tech. We will talk a little bit about data and all that and all the interesting things. But I want you to understand that innovating our way into the future starts first with a walk of faith. We cannot in innovate our way into a future we don't believe in. It's not possible. So when we are proclaiming courses upon Nigeria because our candidate didn't win, or we are jackpying, or we are doing this one, doing that one, believing Nigeria can never be better, I want you to understand what it means to innovate your way into the future. It starts first with a what? Walk of faith. We walk by what? By faith and not by sight. Now, what is that walk of faith? What does it require of us? It requires leading with courage. Look, there is no idea that we established. And you know the beautiful thing? I used to be a very petty person. Thank God for Jesus. I used to, you know, when I was coming up, I would come up with an idea, I would launch it. And I used to save screenshots on Twitter of all the people that said the thing will not work. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I've deleted it, thank God. Uh, I used to say, and there is no idea that we started with. That even people I respect did not say, would say did not work. I remember with Andela, people would say, ah, how can you train somebody to be a software engineer in six months or in three months. Doesn't that sound ridiculous now? Doesn't that sound like a ridiculous thought now? Eh? They say, ah, it's not possible. How can they come and recruit from fraudster land? Doesn't, doesn't that sound ridiculous now? That was where we started. When we wanted to do Flutterwave, they said, ah, InterSwitch has captured the whole market. There is what are you doing with another payments company? InterSwitch, you are there now. InterSwitch is still there. We are there. There are many more coming behind us. Am I lying? You, you have to be willing to refuse to read the room. If you want to innovate your way to the future, and Twitter is your dashboard, I'm sorry, what is she now? Is for broadcast so that you record when you are doing it and after you finish you retweet people are you listening to me you have to be willing to move in the direction of your faith do not allow other people to distract you when Nehemiah was building a wall what happened right everybody was telling him eh, this one that one that one I'm doing a what? Great work. Cannot be distracted. So we have to understand. And we have to be willing to understand that everything that we need will come from God. Everything that we need will come from God. It's not, I, I don't know, I, my son name, let me tell you something. Before 2014, I don't know anybody in Abuja. Eh? Maybe Madam Obi. And that time she was not in government. There is no connection. I'm not, uh, I don't have Godfather. Nothing like that. All it was was understanding, walking by faith, and understanding that God, 
to whom belongs the entire earth and its fullness thereof, all of the earth and all the men that dwell in it will make a way for us. Because we are walking by what? By faith. And that's how this whole thing started. So the first principle, because I know our time is fast spent, is really that. We have to be willing to lead with courage. We have to stop looking at the crowd. If God has placed something in our heart and we have full conviction about the direction it is, we have to be willing to do the work. Part of the problem we have in Nigeria is that everybody believes that only government should lead. And it's a lie. Other societies did not develop like that. How much did government do in America? Before you start talking about people like J.P. Morgan and Harry Potter, how many of them served in government? None. America was built by business people. The things that you enjoy today, how many of them were built by government? People with vision, people with faith, people with courage forged a path. So the first thing that we must understand about innovating our way to the future is we must be willing to forge a path by faith and not by sight. It will look like bush today, but if we do the right things and we do what we should, in another 10 years, this is the story we will be telling in Jesus' name. The second thing is that we must walk in obedience. Because a lot of the things that we are going to need to do to innovate our way into the future, even we will not understand it. And it will look like foolishness to the average person. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, 25, I mean, I want to focus on 25. It says, for the foolishness of God is what? Is wiser than human wisdom. And the wisdom of God is stronger than human strength. A lot of the things that must be done to innovate our way into the future are not things that make sense to the ordinary eye. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. They are not things that make sense to the ordinary eye. I remember that then. We used to pay our developers. We pay our developers to come to learn how to build software. I'm sure at that time people were like, ah, are they Yahoo? Who are they now? <laughs> Why are they paying people to come and do training? Does that make sense? But you know what? Today, it is what? Standard practice. A standard practice. I know personally many points in my career, many points in my career, I have seen situations where what I am doing seems foolish to the ordinary eye. Even me, I cannot tell you that I understand why I am doing I remember when God told me on my 25th birthday, I have to leave Andela. Mark Zuckerberg just invested. Oh. This was the time to enjoy. And that was the time God said, ah, no, I have another assignment for you. Please, excuse yourself. And I had to obey. And out of that obedience, the second one became unicorn before the first one. The second one became a unicorn before the first one. So we have to be willing to walk in obedience. These are, me, for me, I, I mean, like I said, I'm not here to really do the technical stuff. You know, there's a lot of great speakers that tell you, this is what the future looks like, so on and so forth. And I'll say a little bit about that future at the end. But I want us to understand the principles of this walk. How did we get here? before we now talk about how we innovate our way into the future. Because 95% of the things are all about our mindset. 95% did knowing what to do. Nigerians are the best at it. If it's to do research and presentation and graph, easy. We have plenty of consultants. But when it comes to having the conviction to do what is necessary to bring about change in this country, that's where we fall. And we don't fall because of things we don't know. It's because we don't put the word in practice. In Hebrews 11, verse 8, the Bible says, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing what, where he was going. 
There are directions that God is leading us in this country that I don't even know where we are going. Just like 10 years ago, as you look at this graph, I did not know where we were going. If you had told me, like I said, we didn't start this thing to become unicorns. Though. We just said, ah, technology will change Nigeria. Let's, let's bring these people, let's train them, let's get them jobs. Before we knew it, four became 20. 20 became 300. 300 became 1,000. 1,000 became 10,000. 10,000 became 100,000. We're just looking like all of you. Eh? 28 million became 200. After a while, they started doing billion, billion. Even me, self, I don't even understand. But that is, that's the God we serve. That's how it works. So I want us to understand very keenly that we must have the grace, we must ask for that grace to do very hard things in obedience because we may not know where it's going, but there is a destination that God has intended for us in doing that. And it's only our obedience that is standing between us and the salvation of our nation. I want to go to my last point. The demonstration of our faith and obedience is multiplication. But you see, the, the problem we have in the body is that we seem to believe that that multiplication is for us alone. But that is never, that has never been God's intention. Right? Now let me explain what I'm saying. If you go to Genesis 22, it says, I will bless you and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is as the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. Now, why does God multiply us? God multiplies us because of he wants us to multiply as good instruments, as good lights, so that we can establish his kingdom on the earth. But you see, the way we do multiplication is as empire. May God, God bless me, prosper me. Where am I going? The enemy is multiplying himself in our society. Let me just tell you. He's multiplying himself with Yahoo, multiplying himself with prostitution, multiplying himself with corruption. What are we, children of life? What are, how are we multiplying ourselves? We have achieved success. God has blessed us. Then what do we do next? Right? We carry our money abroad. By the grace of God, we started with one unicorn. We didn't know it was a unicorn. We did two. We are not stopping there. All. We have done 100 seeds. We have sown 100 investments since we started. And that's just us. There are others that are doing similar work, some of whom will speak to you today. There are others that have sown multiple seeds. We are sowing seeds as mission. That's our work. Because we know that if we don't multiply ourselves, we are going to let darkness take over. So for us, this is battle, it's war. Any young person we don't grab becomes an instrument in the hand of the devil. So we are not doing this thing rationally. You understand what I'm saying? But God is also not blessing us rationally. After all, you can see this graph. But the reason for the blessing is the multiplication. And so for me, I mean, I've spent, I'm spending a lot of my time. I, I was with Tunde Onokoya um, last two nights ago. Uh, Tunde, for those of you who don't know, runs something called Chess in Slums, where he moves into slums across the country, across the continent, and he's identifying the most brilliant young people through chess and then turning their lives around. It's an amazing work. We are replicating ourselves. All of us have to start thinking, if we say we are people of light, how can we replicate ourselves? And I don't mean, oh, go and give somebody charity, go and give somebody money for food. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying in your neighborhood, you see somebody that is very smart, 
has a future. Is it that you get that guy, or the Yahoo boys, or the Agberus, or the politicians get that guy? We are competing for talent now. So we have we have to do better. We have to do better. All these things that we have achieved is not for announcements. Billion this, billion that. It doesn't matter to me. I'm still in my small place in Yaba. Nothing has changed. But that we will multiply ourselves through tech training, through making sure that we target young people and make sure that they are empowered to do this work and multiply themselves too that they have opportunities that government cannot take away, or one politician cannot take away without having to resort to crime. That one we cannot, we have to do that work. For me, I'm very passionate about the young people between the ages of seven to 17. I want to show you why, very briefly, because my time is, is fast spent. Just look at this graph. Take a look at this graph. This is where we are today. That is median age. Median age means that half the country is under that age, eh? and half the country is what? Above that age. Can you see where Nigeria is? What do you see there? 17.2 years. That means half of Nigeria is under the age of 18. Anything that you are doing above that age, you always see your time. They will overwhelm you. They will vote people that you don't like. I'm telling you, when I say we are fighting the enemy, you don't understand. They will vote people you don't like. They will re respond to people you don't like. They will respond to impulses you don't like. All the way, look at India. The rest of the world is aging. Aging, that means they are getting worse older. That is us. So, when I say we have to focus on the young people between the ages of 7 to 17, I'm very, very serious. All our efforts now, that's where we are focused. I don't care about anybody that is 18 and above anymore. 7 to 17, that's where we must catch them. That's the army that we must build to defeat the enemy. Those young people must have access to opportunities government cannot take away. They must be empowered in dollars. They must work on the internet. Those young people, that is our battle now. Finally, you know, there's a Bible verse that I have now posted as my screen saver. Psalm 127, 3 to 5. says, as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are what? Children of the youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. Do we not have our quiver full of them? They shall not be ashamed, but they shall do what? They shall speak with the enemies at the gates. I appeal to all of us, if we have a school in our neighborhood, primary school, secondary school, let us support those schools. If we have programs like Tunde's program, let us support those programs with everything that we have. Because the battle of the next 20 years is how we make sure that these young people can speak with our enemies at the gates. Thank you.